Hey guys, it's Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things that have helped me build up a solid room portfolio in about two years. Now manage that portfolio. Today I'm taking a question from a friend of mine. His name is Kevin. Every time I talk to somebody on the phone and they can't hear me real well, they always think my name's Kevin. So I always have this affinity to people named Kevin. I don't know. Anywho, Kevin said, when you registered as a realtor, how did you navigate the broker sponsor piece? I was looking at online training and you can do the 180 hours training and exam for less than 500 bucks. The second part of that question was also looking at training as a building inspector. Do you think that would be useful? So guys, this is gonna be a never ending debate. I mean, it's never ending. Um, I can't remember if I have a video on it. I know I've answered numerous questions on this, so I figured just put this out here. So it really is up to your discretion whether you wanna be an agent or not, obviously. But it is a job. You have to go get this training. Yeah, it's 500 bucks. I really, I think when we just um, sponsored um, or got licensed last, um, it was about a, a little less than a thousand. That was materials. That was all the classes. That was everything. It was about a thousand dollars. So you got to go through 180 hours of training. You got to pay about a thousand bucks, 500 to a thousand, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to have to get sponsored by a broker because when you're a licensed agent, you're not just out there doing free willy nilly. You actually work underneath a broker. So there's a broker that holds all the liability. All you are is a sales agent. So you work under them. When you actually sign on the dotted line, um, as in your, your buyer or seller signs on the line, it's your broker who's on that. Your, your IBS, Information Out Broker Services, you're operating actually underneath your broker. So you have to find somebody to do that. Now, there are discount brokers and there are you know top of the line brokers. Keller Williams, they're gonna charge you for every single thing. They're gonna charge you $100 a month to do this and take 70% of this and do this. They're gonna have high commission splits and they're gonna take a lot of your money, but they're gonna offer some great training for you. So in a year or two years, you're gonna have access to this massive network and this abundance of training. Whereas at a discount broker, meaning somebody with just an office, they're not gonna give you anything. They might not charge you anything. They might charge you very minimal percentage of your sales or maybe a flat fee, 250, 300, $500, uh, a transaction, uh, but they're not gonna offer you anything. They're not gonna have structured programs for you to go off of. They're not gonna have sales training. They're not gonna have uh, seller representation presentations and stuff like that. So you gotta think about that. Is that something, are you just doing it to save a little bit of money on some commissions or are you doing it as a, uh, you know, something that you think you might get into for the, for, for the long haul? Because if you're gonna do it, you're gonna to have to maintain, you've got to, the second year renewal is a pain in the ass. You've got another 80 or 90 hours that you have to do. And you, some of that's gotta be, well, I don't know how to be classroom hours now, but some of that has to be done. Then you've got your insurance. You've got your, um, your you know, Houston Association of Realtors, who's I'm, I'm with in Houston here. And you've got, um, sorry, power just went out. It is raining. If you guys can't hear that thunderstorm, the show must go on. Uh, we do this live, unedited, as always. Um, so I'm in Houston Association Realtors. I'm a member there. You have to pay those dues. You have to pay super dues if you want to use a super set. You have to pay showing time dues if you want to actually show the property online. So you start adding up and you're looking at several, I mean, I would say between five and $10,000 a year in association dues, insurance, and then all the other things that you actually like really need. You know, like you need access to Supra or you can't show your clients a property with the Supra. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need showing time so they can, um, you know, schedule showings without you sitting there physically talking to everybody and granting them access. So there's stuff that you need. I would say between five and 10,000, that's probably a, a safe bet. Uh, and, and including the continuing education that you'll have to do. So there's all that. Do you wanna do that? It's a business. However, if you do wanna do it, like I said, you go, Discount brokers save you a lot of money, absolutely no training. A big uh, box house like Keller Williams Century 21, I'm sure Remax, they have numerous training, abundance of training. And I know some very good Keller Williams agents. However, it just depends on what you wanna do. Is that something that you really wanna go through? So that would be my question back to you if you're thinking about becoming an agent. 
The second piece of this, and I'll link below to the Texas uh, Real Estate Commission, the TREC um, website on what the cla the requirements are, because it's 180 hours of, of, of uh, real estate courses. So you've got 30 hours of this, 30 hours of that, blah, blah, blah. You have to go through an application, credit background, or well, background check. Um, you have to do all this stuff. So anywho, that's one side of it. The second part of this question was also, was also looking at training as a building inspector, would you think that would be useful? So again, this depends, guys. I don't know what you're trying to do. You know, if, if you're wanting to be a property manager or somebody who's going to buy and hold rentals long term and be active in that, it probably would be good to get some inspector training to know what to look for. Is it structural? Now, a lot of those specialties, so you know, they'll know generally what's going on with electrical. They'll know generally what's going on with foundation. They'll know generally what's going on with plumbing, but they're not specialists in that. You might still have to have uh, call in somebody for that stuff. So the inspector training though would be good for overall understanding how a property works, what some f common faults are. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how the inspector process works. I know that you have to apprentice underneath a professional inspector, just like you would with a um, with an agent as underneath your broker. Um, and one other note, so if you're an agent, it takes four years at the time of this recording in uh, August, 2021, um, four years as a licensed agent and so many other criteria, how many deals you have to do and, and things that you have to have under your belt until you can become a broker. So there's also, like I said, with the inspector, you have to apprentice underneath somebody. And then there's got so long and so many inspections you have to do until you can do your own thing. So these aren't just, I'm gonna get take this class and then I can just poof and boom, become, a, become an agent or become an inspector and start making money off that. It's not how it works. Uh, but I do think, to kind of sum all this up, I think depending upon what you wanna do, um, if you think you're gonna be in real estate for the long term, it would be beneficial to get it. I don't think if you want to buy a half a dozen to a dozen rental properties and use it as a long-term wealth strategy that you really need to get your license, you can, but again, you're going to have to go to class and you're going to have to keep it up. Um, you know, it just depends. It really just depends. Now, I hope that was useful. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. If you guys are battling back and forth with this and want to chat about it, I have my license. I had to get it to be a property manager and man manage other people's properties. But until then, I bought nearly every single house I have without a license. So you, you guys could definitely do it. Hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. See you all next week. Thanks.